views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so great connecting with all of you. Welcome to the show. You know, it's really kind of cool that I get to connect with Dr. Glenna Rice each and every month, sometimes more than once a month. And what we get ready to do is bring a new level of consciousness, access consciousness to the world. Today, Glenna is joining me here, and we have a very special guest on the show today. First thing what I'd like to say is tell you a little bit about Dr. Glenna Rice. Now, what I want to tell you about Glenna is the following. I've gotten to be part of her journey here in these past couple years to watch her grow, to change, to go back to school, to finish school, and to get a doctorate. All of that, how does somebody do that, run her own business, raise children, and still be happy, joyful, and travel the globe teaching other people how to do the same? Well, that's because she learned a few skills along the way. As an access consciousness facilitator, she's learned those skills that enable us to live in the question of what else is possible. Today, she is joining me here for a very important and interesting show about what can horses teach us about our bodies. And many of you have heard me talk about my journey as a child and what having a very early experience, let's call it a horse experience, has meant to me. Today, Susie Godsey is joining us here today, our very special guest. And, you know, Glenna, welcome to the show. Let's, let's before we bring Susie on, I would love to have you talk a little bit about your experience, how you got to know Susie, and, and this show in particular. Oh, I would love to. Thank you, Dr. Pat. And thanks for having the show and having us on. Susie, I've known Susie for a long time. I've known her for like over 10 years. We both bound access these tools around the same time. And she's just this magical, magical woman um, with animals. She is an animal whisperer, if that even sort of gets close to what she can do. She's been working with animals. She's I brought mice and cats and a dog <laughs> to her over the years to get um, help with strange things that were going on. And she's just a magician with that. So about a year and a half ago, we started pairing up and teaching this amazing class that we'll talk about on the show called the SE Extravaganza. And SE is the Energetic Synthesis of Structural Embodiment, which is a long name for some really amazing body work we do on people, bodies, and horse bodies in a four-day class together. And we started doing that, and it has really turned out to be really it's so far beyond anything I would have ever imagined this class is, what people are getting out of it, what I've gotten out of it, what it's changed with me and what the horses receive and contribute to us. So that's um, one of the many wonderful things I'm doing with Susie. Well, you know, and part of this is, you know, looking at what our bodies can learn. But more importantly, I remember as a young child for myself is is having an experience at a very young age with horses in in a very, very unlikely place in the Bronx, New York. Um, But as a young child, there was a connection I had 
that I couldn't explain to anyone. And this is, you know, when we talk about Susie, Susie is an access consciousness certified facilitator, animal communicator, creator of a unique method, which we'll talk a lot about today in the show. But what she does is also empowers people, as you were saying, Glenna, to step into our own innate capacities to know who we truly are and using some of the tools of access consciousness. Susie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Pat and Glenna. Thank you. (laughs) You know, I want to start out the conversation with what I said about myself and being a very young girl in the Bronx, New York, not a place that you would even imagine that I would have this experience. But my dad took me horseback riding when I was five years old, really young, to be on a very big horse. But what happened with that is is not explainable. It's something that changed my life forever. And I wanted to hear from you, Susie, what has your journey been like? And what have you learned that excites us about how we can transform given working with horses? (laughs) <laughs> that's a big question do you yeah. have more than an hour for that <laughs> well what, but you, you just talk glenn and i glenn we can just sit here absolutely <laughs> oh, that's great um well you know i was one of those kids that um was a little bit weird i would say in so many ways but literally as a small child i was obsessed with animals and i wasn't really allowed to have animals at first and so um I snuck them into my house I had mice um that I basically was carrying (laughs) around in my sweater so nobody would know I had them and you know like I mean I just did all these things just to really have a connection with animals and and then also I so wanted to have like a dog in my life as a kid Mm -hmm. and I couldn't and so I started having an imaginary dog pack that I was walking as a kid and I would call them out loud by name you know and imagine like walking around I grew up in Germany but in the streets there and calling my imaginary dogs you know um I'm sure some kids were like calling me sort of by names which I don't even know about (laughs) so um when I really started having um my first dog it was a very interesting journey because that dog turned out to be not a friendly dog with people and So he didn't really fit what I thought I was going to have. You know, you have those ideas of like, oh, I'm going to have this wonderful dog and it's going to be like Lassie and um, we'll do things together. And this dog was really not that. And so it made me very aware uh, that, that our animals are really also having their own way of being that they have their own personality but also that we can really shape that personality with our own family life and the way that we are and so for me very early on I realized that you know if if your family is having some kind of tension the dog might actually act that out for you if the family is not willing to really be open about the dynamics that are going on and in my family there was a lot of not talking about what was up for everybody but um, there was a lot of underlying maybe what I would nowadays call like aggression and it wasn't like violent by any means but there was just that that tension and so our dog was the one that got to act it out which was very interesting Um, and, and so it really made me so aware how amazingly psychic these animals are and they really pick up so much from us and if we are not being willing to be aware of how we are contributing to them having certain behaviors then it really ends up like it did with our family where you know we blame the dog for for his behavior but um you know but like now I would say well we created a lot of that so I think that was sort of a big aha moment for me um even you know at like 12 13 years old like wow yeah Yeah. there is something else going on here yeah yeah 
Yeah. I mean, Glenna, I mean, for you too, uh, there is something magical. And, you know, what you both are talking about here today, I think is, is one of those things that if you talk to anyone that has had any connection to animals, let's just say, but let's say horses in particular, there is a love and a fascination that cannot be described. What would you say, Dr. Glenna? Oh, yeah. Horses are pretty incredible beings. And I I don't have an experience with horses until really um, over the last maybe 10 Mm -hmm. years in Costa Rica on, you know, some of the workshops I would go to to ride. And often Susie was there to contribute to me. And then the last few years doing this class, I've gotten to um, spend so much more time around horses. And this class has just changed some of the weird stuff I even had, you know, big, (laughs) big animals. And I didn't know how psychic I was with them and how much of um, and how any of the energies I had going on around a horse, they would pick up and then I would pick it up back. And it would exponentialize into, you know, those thoughts in your head, like, what's this horse going to do? And so many of those things have changed. And there's just there's a contribution horses are willing to be that I don't know that there's I don't know if Susie would agree with this, but any other animal that we, you know, as humans are around a lot has that ability to contribute. They're there's a gifting that they be so easily yeah. with us. Yeah, yeah. I see. And, you know, go, go ahead, yeah. Susie. Well, what I was going to add to it, that is really that I think we have a bit of a fascination with them because they are so big and we can't totally force these things. You know, with a dog, I think you can still physically overpower a dog if you had to, you know, but you really can't do that to a horse. No. Um, there is no way that you could totally physically overpower them. And so I think we we sort of know that as people, we have to be willing to work with a horse because they can hurt us and they can harm us. Um, and so I think there's a bit more of that respect there. And that makes it fascinating, I think, yeah. for us, you know, because yeah. we are more vulnerable around them than I think even with a big dog. <laughs> I know. So. And, and fascinating and powerful in both the physicality, the physical nature of them, but the energy of them. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk with Dr. Glenna Rice and with Susie Godsey about what this is that they've created. What is this fabulous class? And how is this class changing the lives of people? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. How would you like to release your stress and let go of your anxiety, fear, depression, or even physical pain? How would you like to feel more relaxed, more confident, and experience more success in all areas of your life? Dave Dodge from Stress Buster Radio has a number of cutting-edge methods that will help you do just that. For more information on how Dave can help you release stress, visit StressBusterRadio.com. Skype and phone sessions available. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Registration is now open for the 25th Annual Woman of Wisdom Conference. Join the fabulous presenters from around the country on February 16th through the 20th. If you believe in raising the feminine spirit and transforming our world, then this conference is for you. 
Get your tickets now. One day and full weekend passes are available. For more information about presenters and tickets, visit womanofwisdom.org. That's womanofwisdom.org. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author, Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving, even in the face of adversity. Say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I've been so excited about this show today. Dr. Glenn Arias is joining me here with Susie Godsey, and both of them have come together to create ESSE, E-S-S-E. And what does ESSE mean? What is an ESSE extravaganza? Uh, Dr. Glenna Rice, as many of you know, I have mentioned before, she is an access consciousness facilitator, travels the world. But both Dr. Glenna and Susie have come together to create something special. And that is what horses can teach us about our bodies. So, you know, Glenna, tell us about ESSE. What is it? And um, what what is it about this that is so needed in the world today? Wow. ESSE is, like I said earlier, Energetic Synthesis of Structural Embodiment. That's the name, the mm-hmm. long name. So ESSE is the shortened name, which yeah. is catching on. It's a class that has manual therapy, so hands-on body work that targets the fascial system. A lot of people will be familiar with some of this work in cranial sacral or myofascial release or rolfing. There's um, an element of all of those that is presented in this class. Susie has training in rolfing. I was a myofascial therapist and cranial sacral therapist for years. So we bring that. We have the access tools and the access body processes. And we've also both, once we started access, the body work we were doing, we added all of the access tools. So it started to develop into um, this really incredible, kind and gifting body work that really, it changes the structure of your body. A lot of the tight, hardened, restricted places just that that are created from judgments and points of views and over overuse and hundreds of different ways. Mm -hmm. And Susie was doing this class for quite a few years and she's very busy. She travels the world with access Uh consciousness and she started, she was doing it for horses and for bodies. And she tended to just do the horse classes, not the body. So a couple years ago I asked, could I do the classes for bodies? And it was like, yes. Um, and I started doing the classes for bodies and right away we, um, created the class together. I think Susie asked me to come in and do a little presentation and it turned into a totally different class where we're both, you go from bodies to horses and horses to bodies. We bring the horses in with us working on the massage tables that they contribute. So we work with the horses around us, um, and we work on them. So they're getting the same work on their bodies that we're doing on our bodies and they get it, they get it, and they contribute. So that's what the SE extravaganza is. Now, the other two classes are the SE for bodies and SE for horses. Um, you can; Those are also available, too, if you didn't want to have the, the amazing class. And there's no prerequisites for this class. We have one coming up in Houston um, in February 25th to the 28th with the intro Conscious Horse, Conscious Rider with Susie Godsey um, and a special guest, Gary Douglas, will be there that day, too, on Gary's amazing ranch out there in Houston. So it will be quite an amazing, like a beyond extravaganza event. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for people, they can find this out um, if they go to your website. What's the best way for folks to find this out? Is it uh, uh, Susie's website or your website? Because, you know, this is something that people really have been longing for. How should, what's the best way for folks yeah. to find out well, more about it? Both websites will get you the information. Mine, glennarice.com slash Essie. 
E-S-S-E, or Susie Godsey also, and I think hers is a little bit more updated than mine. I was just Great. looking at it just before the show. So either way, you can get to um, inf more information about the class that way. Yeah. I mean, if you go to Susie's site as well, you know, and it's S U Z y god c g o d s e y dot com if you go to her site there's also pictures that you can see um and get a sense of really the energy uh of what this is in in the change that it could create um i wanted to ask you uh both about you know this idea of connectivity you know what it is that happens with working with horses that changes people's awareness of their own bodies. Now, as a five-year-old, I got it. I got it, but I couldn't explain it. And I don't think many people can. Maybe Susie, would you like to start? What is it, you know, how does working on horses change people? Clearly it <laughs> must change the horse, but I know it does change people, right? It does. Uh, I think, again, it's it's sort of that sense that the horse will never lie to you. Like, if you are there and you are touching a horse, and the horse will not be polite and be like, oh, thanks for touching me here. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to stand here for you to touch me some more. If If the horse is perceiving the touch as uncomfortable or as... Um, not really working uh, or if the energy that comes with it is not really pleasant for the horse the horse will move away and so in that moment you have to kind of go whoa what was that you know um, and so you have to really be very present with your energy and you have to be willing to be totally present with the horse and their energy and their body and it's very interesting because even horses that are trained to be in halter and stand still for somebody to saddle them, when we're doing this class, it's almost like they know that they have permission to be a little bit different. They don't have to be the super well-behaved trained horse. They can actually let us know when something isn't fitting them and so if you come with a point of view for example like oh you know I know better and I know how to heal you and I know what's wrong with you and now I'm going to fix it mm. um, that horse is most likely not going to stand there for you you know that horse is going to go oh yeah <laughs> you know that okay cool let me show <laughs> you something else um, so it's very interesting and what people have said in this class too which is really cool. We've had actually a lot of people come to these classes that never even have been around horses and that didn't even know um, why they were drawn to the class. They just knew they had to come. And so they were not horse people. But they say that once they have gone through this class, they have gained the confidence that they actually are doing energy work, that what they're doing is actually... Um, affecting bodies, um, that they are more confident about themselves, that they actually had a, such a different level of communication with another being that they didn't even know they could have. So it's interesting what the horses and this class sort of brings about for both the horses and the people. Uh, it's It's a little hard to explain in a way with words, but people really get a different level of presence with yeah. themselves and yeah. sort of, I want to say almost peace, you know, mm -hmm. like there's a level of peace that people walk away with yeah. um, that I think they hadn't experienced before in that same way. Yeah. Yeah. Glenna, you know, you work with, you work with individuals. I mean, you teach classes about the body and I would imagine that for you as well, you know, what you've been able to see, uh, you have a baseline for them too, right? Yeah. What is it? How would you describe this? It's interesting. Um, the the horses, when they receive the body work, like Susie's been talking about, like she's saying, you know, if you're not present with the horse and you're not doing something the horse is actually asking for, um, the horse can walk, just walk away. But if you are actually present with the horse, what they will do, the information they'll give you back or the feedback you get from a horse's body when it's what they're actually asking for and the change. I mean, we've had horses that had tightness in their neck and couldn't run correctly on the, um, mm. that because they couldn't hold their head up the way they were supposed to and, and during the training. 
And when you got to the place that they wanted to change with your hands, they would lean into you. They'll nod their heads. There's just an energy that like you are there and I'm here with you and thank you so much for working on me. And you'll see that with people bodies, but people aren't so easily able to give that kind of gratitude back to you in the moment, the way a horse will. And to perceive that with your body as a body worker, is anyone mm-hmm. that works with body or even not a body worker, because we get we get people in this class that aren't body workers, to get that, um, that you're creating a change and gifting to an animal or, you know, an animal's body that's receiving it in the moment and lets you know that it's working can be some of just a huge gift. It it changed how I work on bodies when I first worked on a horse. And then this class changed it dynamically. um, Because now I can start feeling that feedback, even if the person isn't giving it to me, I can feel it differently from their body. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are some of the things we're going to talk about when we come back from break, because you mentioned a word earlier, and I want to get back to it with both of you. And it's the word intuition. Um, And, you know, the reason that this word is so important is that my experience with a horse at a very young age, I do believe to this day, it opened up a part of me at a very young age that stayed with me very young age that stayed with me. We're going to take a short break and we come back. We're going to talk about what can these animals contribute to us? What do they know? And can we get the same knowing? Before we go to break, I want to make sure you know that you can go to Susie's website, susiegodsee.com, and you can find out about the upcoming class, but just mark it down in your calendar, February 25th to the 28th. When we come back, we'll also talk more about that, Um, give you an idea of what this class is. Uh, There is no prerequisite, I think uh, Dr. Glenna said. When we come back, what do these animals know? And can we experience the same or similar knowing? All right, everybody, we'll be right back. Dr. Glenna Rice, Susie Gatsy in the house. We'll be right back. show talk radio to thrive by i am so thrilled to be talking to all of you we have got talk radio for all of us are you ready and willing and able to accept all of the abundance you can muster up in your life check us out the drpatcho.com transformation talk radio.com transformation radio.fm oh my goodness What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. What is a brilliant culture, and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Do you ever feel as if you're working twice as hard but only getting half as far? Are you trying to connect with your path in life and finding it elusive? Mainstream Metaphysics Radio is a weekly call-in show where we harness our connection with the universe and use what is in our power to affect change for optimal success and happiness. This hit show bridges the divide between what is and what we do not know. Eve, named one of the country's top psychics, also known as the MBA Psychic, invites you on this journey for this live call-in show with readings, featured guests, leaders, and visionaries in both business and spiritual callings. 
So join Eve Thursdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com as she takes metaphysics mainstream. For more information about Eve, visit EliteTarot.com. That's EliteTarot.com. Hey everyone, welcome back. I want to make sure um, that you all know that you can find out more about Dr. Glenna Rice at uh, glennarice.com, but also drglennarice.accessconsciousness.com. And there is so much information that you can find. It's about Susie, all of our social media, pictures, everything at suzygodsey.com. That's S-U-Z-Y-G-O-D-S-E-Y.com. Um, and also the class, you can find out about the class there. Now, the class I'm referring to, for those of you out there, Glenn is going to describe a little bit, but you want to you want to hold out your the 24th of February, uh, 25th through the 28th. Um, and Glenna, j- just give people a, an understanding of what these classes are. Susie, one is with you and uh, special guest Gary Douglas, and then the other one is what you both will be doing um, together. So give everybody a sneak peek on what's to come. Okay, that was great. You did you did describe it well there, Pat. It's um, <laughs> on the twenty fourth. We're going to have an intro night, an intro afternoon evening with a barbecue dinner provided at Ranch, um, with Susie doing an intro to Conscious Horse, Conscious Rider, which is where you really start to see what we were talking about at the other, you know, where horses can be a contribution to you. And there's an awareness horses have that they gift to us that can create more for us and the planet. And before that, the few hours before Susie's class starts, and that's around five, hers will start, Gary Douglas, who own, is the owner of the ranch, and many of you may have heard him on the, the show. He did have a show with you a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, He's going to be showing off the beautiful horses that he has on the ranch and talking about them. He has these Costa Resense, um horses that are quite incredible that he's been breeding and brought um, at least one. I don't know if there's more Susie Mano from, from Costa Rica in. So he has a herd there of quite a few horses that are some of the kindest horses I have ever been around in my life. In, in fact, if you go to my website, the se one glennarisecom slash SE, there is a video towards the bottom of that front page that has um, Dane here talking about their ranch that they own together and the horses there, which is really quite beautiful. And you get to see pictures of the ranch. So the whole class will be at the ranch. We have a big tent coming in. Um, And then the next four days will be Susie and I showing you how to do this SE work on your bodies and on horses' bodies. Yes. And both websites, by the way, have the information about the upcoming um, event, which is fabulous. And what I want to say, and let's talk about this, you know, before the break, what I was saying was, listen, you know, how is this going to help us? How's it going to create some ease, some joy in our lives? What's it going to do, um, you know, to help us uh, create something perhaps that we have not had in our consciousness in a really long time. You know, we're technically plugged in. We're walking around as if we are so impersonal. And my experience with a horse at a very young age, um, my dad uh, happened to somehow uh, watch my fascination with a rocking horse, which is not a real horse, but it's a toy right? You get on this rocking horse. And as a very young three, four year old child, I would not get off. I couldn't get off the horse. I never wanted to get off the horse. I wanted to eat on this thing. It didn't matter. That was just going to be the way it was. So somehow my dad connected some strange dots, which said, oh, maybe I should show her like a real horse because that's what I would say. Off we went to Van Cortland Park in the Bronx. And before I knew it, I was on a very, very big horse. And I had the entire horse gear outfit, the whole thing, right? And here I was at a very young age. 
And I was so drawn to these animals and still am today that it was my birthday, my fifth birthday. And I was on this horse and they could not take me riding because it was too cold. And I created such a hissy fit about it. I mean, I was really, I wasn't the best child. I'm just saying, but this day on my birthday and not to actually even go, my dad put me in the car, must have called ahead, called the trainer and said, just put her up on a horse. And that's what they did. It was minus 15 degrees, got the horse out, got it all ready to go. And I remember these steps that I had to climb to get on the horse, right? And I remember climbing up there. I think we must have walked maybe 10 feet like in a circle, but it, I was happy. So this is what I'd love for you both to talk about. There is a knowing that you cannot describe about what these animals know and what we then can learn from them. And I really think that my experience opened me up for a level of intuition that I don't know that I would have received. And Susie, I'd love for you to start and talk about that. And then you, Glenna. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a great story that, that you just told. And I think, um, I think that's probably why a lot of us are choosing to have animals or pets in our lives, just because there is sort of an authenticity with what animals can have with the planet and with their surroundings. And the interesting thing about that is for me that we as people, it's not really that we don't have it. It's just, we have been burying it. Mm. And, you know, from a very early age, you are so um, indoctrinated to, you, you only can know if you learned it from someone or if you read it or if you, did something for it. You, you're not allowed to just know something. You're not allowed to um, just be in this world and to, to be all knowing. And that's the thing that actually for me personally, access consciousness has opened up so much is the trust that I know something without having to open a book and study it, but that I can actually know. And animals don't have that problem. They don't they don't go around and say, well, I didn't study the weather, so I don't know what's going on next year. But we now know that, for example, rabbits will only breed if they know that the next year is going to bring enough rain to feed their young. So that's very interesting because how do they figure that out? But they're just willing to be connected to the earth in a way that they are willing to receive that information. And so as people, actually, we have the possibility to know as well. It is just almost untraining us from all the things that we have been trained to follow rather than actually really listening to the earth, to the the beat of the earth, the sound the earth makes, the, yeah. the, you know, the vibration that the animals have. And, you know, if we're willing to actually start to tune into all these vibrations and connections we can also become alert to certain things that are going on on the planet and around us in a totally different way. Yeah. You know, Glenna, from, from your perspective, you know, what Susie is talking about, I, I call it an opening. And I know that you work on people and you teach body work, Glenna. Um, and you and I, I think, have talked about this before. You know, sometimes we hold a restriction you know, even though we say we want help, we want, you know, we want to participate, we want our bodies to heal. There is this level of restriction that varies through from, from person to person. But I wanted to ask you, you know, a horse knows, animals know. How have you discovered in this process that you're, you both are teaching, how does it help us be less restrictive? <laughs> in the process. Does that make sense, that word, restrictive? Absolutely. I know, Glenna, you love these words I bring up, right? Yes, and restricted, <laughs> it can be like you restricted your body's not moving as much because of something right. going on. But also, yeah. you know, we we do hold on to our pains and our problems quite yeah. effectively from a lot of the strange points of views we have or decisions we've made, you know, this lifetime or another. The horses don't tend to do that. Um, animals don't tend to. When the, 
when you're changing something that's going on with their body, they'll just change it. They don't, you don't have to ask them questions. You know, there might be a little bit of processing that Susie and I will show you how to do with the horses, but they're willing to let things go that will serve them or create more for them or create a better future for them with much more ease than I find that people do. And the horses will start to, like, what do they know? They know how to do that, and they're able to show you how to do that with your own body. So being able to let go of these things that we think are permanent, we think are diseases we can't get rid of and can't change, seeing a horse change this in a few minutes right in front of you. And sometimes they, their bodies will change and you can see the change happening within seconds right in front of you to see that that's possible for them. You know, the beasts of the planet and us people can't do that. Of course we can. It'll start to allow us to know that we can do that too. Um, and they also like, if you've got something going on, the horse doesn't pretend you don't. <laughs> if you're <laughs> or you're sad or you're nervous or any of those things, the horse will that energy that you're being, the horse is very aware of and will let you know it. And you, yeah. and, and Susie's so good at, at helping people see what the horses know. She so communicates with them so psychically and amazingly. Yeah. Amazing. All the time I ask him, what's possible with that when I see how amazing she is. So she's right there. We had a woman who came to this class who didn't really like horses much. Her sister has a um, has horses in the Seattle area and she's never much bothered with them, but she came to the class because she loved the body work. Well, that was last summer. She now owns a horse, rides five times a week, moved from Hawaii to, to um, L.A. She was a surf fanatic. Now she rides horses more than she ever goes surfing. Um, yeah. It completely changed everything she had going on with horses that she didn't think she wanted to be around him and receive that. And receiving herself completely changed. And now she's one of our biggest fans and changed so much about her life. And her horse is one of her best friends um, now too. So it's pretty amazing what's possible with this class. Yeah. You, you know, and, and the word restriction, you know what I mean too. There's an energetic, like you talked about an energetic restriction, but there's also a physical restriction. You know, there are some people that do not like to get their body touched, but that connection to an animal, and I've seen this and actually I've seen it in myself, but that connection to an animal, especially in my, you know, I believe a horse, there's that connection which just relaxes people. I don't know how to say it. It's like, I don't know, if you, the minute that you touch an animal or the minute that I touched a horse, clearly touched it, there was something that changed in me. And I think the barriers, it didn't matter what street I grew up on. There was something that happened that was magical. Susie, how would you describe that? <laughs> um, well, the word that really comes up is that the animals don't have any judgment of us. And when you even said that, like the horse didn't care what street you grew up on or what language you speak or what your past is. The horse is just willing to be there with you. And I think the, the thing that's really touching for people, too, is that in this class, what we do is we have our massage tables in the in the horse corral with the horses totally at liberty. And so the horses can choose to participate in the session we're doing on each other. And it's really magical when they do and and they come over and they start touching mm. people's bodies or they're just standing there next to the body and contributing energetically and I think that's the piece that you were just describing is yeah when people start to sort of perceive that like wow there's an animal here that's actually touching me yeah. whether it's physically or energetically it doesn't matter but wow it's so there is something that does change you there is sort of a an opening that does get created and I just actually right now have this one a moment in my in my head where you know there was this man who was laying on the table and um, somebody was working on his shoulder area and the horse came over and literally just touched with with its nose right on his heart you know and yeah. just stood there and was just sort of you know touching him there at the heart and it was such a moment like it brings up your tears because it's so there's an energy that starts to be exchanged there that is so. It's not something we ever how see. To just, <laughs> we rarely yeah. see anything like that in on the planet. That yeah, a, exactly. And the the joy of the people, like when when the horses, 
when you're laying there on a table receiving work and you realize that there's a horse that's just come up by your feet and is standing right there, maybe putting its nose on your knee or on your heart and the joy that there's like this joy of embodiment. There is something so much greater available to us than what we're doing, walking around in our small little lives all the time. There's something greater that the horses show us. I know. You know, I was on a vision quest in the uh, high desert of, of, of California, the Sierras. And I was on a vision quest and this was you know, not my first. It was, you know, I, I can't remember exactly which one, but I was part of the council that helped run these now at this point. And I remember we were out in the high desert and I looked up and there were uh, there were wild horses, which I mm-hmm. understand are very rare now, right, to find. Um, and I didn't think twice about it. I didn't think twice about, you know, getting up and working towards them because that's what I did. I mean, I could see them um, and it was clear to me that I was going to walk towards them. And uh, apparently that's not something that you want to do because I alarmed the other people that were part of the council as I just simply got up like breathing and I saw them and I got up and I started to walk towards them. I don't know what I was going to do. <laughs> like Susie, I did not have a game plan here. You know, I, you know what I mean? I didn't say, Oh, let me go. Let me go walk towards them and say, hi, no. I just wanted to walk towards them. And I got very, very close to them. Apparently, dangerously close is what I was told. (laughs) I didn't feel any danger. And then the people back at, you know, that were watching me started to scream. And Mm. the horses got startled. But I remember this experience like it was yesterday. I got so close to them. And I know that my intention was going to be of kindness and love. And I probably was going to touch them. But Mm -hmm. you see, let's talk about fear for a minute. There is a level of being that transcends fear. And I have a sense that what you both put together helps people melt that fear away. Yeah, because in that sense, like you, you described it so beautifully, you walking up to those horses, there was no moment of you going, oh, maybe I shouldn't be here. And neither <laughs> was there that moment for the horses because you were so authentic in the way that you were being and the horses were so present with you that both parties knew that there was nothing to quote unquote fear of each other. But it is so interesting when you when other people get involved and they're observing, but they're not actually being willing to receive the energy. They're going by, you know, some rules, you know, oh, the rule is you shouldn't approach a wild horse. The rule is this, the rule is that. But if you don't actually function from that and you're just being present, you know, if you're in danger, you know, you Mm -hmm. would have known if you had to step out of the way or if you shouldn't go any further. And I think that's the part where if we're willing to really be more in that in that moment, then fear doesn't exist. It's really not real. It's a construct. Mm-hmm. It's not, it, you know, fear gets created by a possibility of a future that may occur. But it's really like, well, is it there now? You know, like, uh, is the horse trampling me? Uh, mm-hmm. No. So why should I be afraid of the horse trampling me mm-hmm. before it actually makes a move to trample me? Like, it makes no sense. And yet that's what we often buy into. You know, we, we think that fear is what keeps us alive, but animals don't live in fear uh, usually. I mean, there's always exceptions to that when there's trauma and all that kind of stuff. But let's just say an animal that, you know, lives out there in the wild, they don't live in fear of being killed. They are not living in fear of anything right. really. No, they they're... are present in the moment. And if the moment says run, they will run, you know, right. but not, not yeah. because they're afraid. You know, and... It's more like, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because this is something that we do talk about quite a bit in the class. And it's, yeah. a, you know, being aware and asking questions like, will these, are these horses going to trample me? And being aware of yes or no, is that a possibility? And then there's a totally different question. But if you if that wasn't the possibility, then walking up to them was actually what was creating more for you and them, and they were definitely receiving you. Uh, I know that in the 
we've had one class in Germany in particular, but other ones where the group of us will be standing around and the horses may be on the other side of the arena. We were doing clearings, talking about the stuff we've been talking about on this. And the horses start to get really curious about us. And Susie's described it as like, we look like normal people, but our energy is so different. And they'll yeah. start walking up slowly and slowly to us and start interacting with our group, you know, coming up to people's heads and giving them sniffs on the neck. And it's so lovely to see and and the, the ease they have when they get, wow, this is a really different group of people. They are not asking us to be um, what usually people are asking us to be. They're actually yeah. just here with us being present. What are they going to do? <laughs> Well, I mean, this is really what we're talking about today on a bigger level, because, you know, um, I, I didn't want to interrupt this because it's important. So we just skipped the break. And I want to make sure in these last minutes that we talk about what this opening is. I really mean it. I think that my experience at a very young age tapped into something in me as a child and I referred to it as intuition you talked about that earlier Glenna I mean isn't this intuition as we're calling it part of what helps us you know be in the world in a way that transcends knowledge so to speak can you talk about that that level that level of intuition that comes into play on both sides. I think, I think horses are highly intuitive. Um, yeah. And Susie, do you want to talk about that a bit? Do you have, um... <laughs> well, for me, uh, intuition is really that piece where we're willing to know. And you were just describing it really beautifully. Um, Dr. Pat, you were just like, really, it, yeah, that's really the piece. And, and really, like I said earlier, I do actually know that we all have it. So it's there is not a person in the world that doesn't have it. We just have levels of of burial of that, you know. So mm -hmm. I think um, some people have hidden that really well, and others it's a little closer to the surface. But yeah, when you open the door to actually trusting that and knowing yeah. that it's there, you then can have more and more and more of it. I think. When we sort of poo-poo it and we push it away like, oh, that was just serendipitous or, ah, you know, that just happened, rather than actually going like, wow, I actually created that. I knew that. Um, I was aware of that. If we're starting to really be more willing to acknowledge it and bring it into our cognitive, then we can really start to have more and more and more of it. And I think that's really what also pointing out during this class is, Please trust the things that are coming up for you. Trust what you are perceiving. Um, trust when the horse is giving you feedback. No, it's not just a serendipitous moment. It's actually, it's actually there. You know, this is it. Like, please take that moment and cherish it and ask for more of that to show up uh, yeah. rather than try to poo-poo it away. Yeah. yeah. It's really like we've talked in, like, knowing that you know. Intuition to me is just like a piece of awareness yes. or a piece of knowing there's so much more of that yeah. available. And when you acknowledge it, you have more access to it, which is one of the wonderful names of the work we're doing is access. So yeah. you're accessing your consciousness, accessing your awareness, taking those barriers and stories and points of views we've had um, that keep us from having that easily available to us because it's there all the time and mostly we're ignoring it and we'll let it peek through and call it intuition, but it's really our awareness and our knowing that's that, that this class and a lot of the classes Susie and I are teaching are yeah. giving you access to. Yeah. And I think that's a really key part because, you know, we use the word intuition and it's a word. Intuition is a word that I think mainstream is starting to get used to using. Yeah. Um, and you're right. It's a small piece of it. I think that for a lot of people, that level of awareness is key because, you know, we ask most of the time, for help in solving problems and yet what I've learned and what you've you talk about is you know solving the problem is not going to give us awareness and I think that's the most important thing you talk about what else is possible here see and I think what you're talking about is a world of possibilities and awareness that accelerates the process I'm not saying that we can't get to awareness by other means but don't you think that by working with animals and especially horses, 
could accelerate this process of 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 restricted move removing restrictions what do you think of that does it accelerate it <laughs> it's like a rocket ship to consciousness <laughs> exactly that's what i'm saying <laughs> Right, right, right. And, you know, the world we live in today, I don't know about you two, but the world we live in today, people have the patience of, yeah, nobody wants to wait. Exactly. (laughs) Well, I want to thank you both for today. And I have one question for each of you. Thank you for today. Um, What's the message, uh, Dr. Leonard, let's start with you. What's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with? Oh, know that you know and trust that you know. Trust that you know. Wow, thank you. Susie, how about you? What's your personal message? (laughs) I would say, um, what if you actually knew that by every action you take, you have the capacity to create the future you truly desire? Ooh, I like that, Susie. I'm going to pull that sound bite out. Thank you so much. Thank you both. Um, And please go to glennarice.com. And you can also go to suzygodsey.com. I'm Dr. Pat. If you've missed any part of this, this will replay tonight. But go to transformationtalkradio.com, download it. And don't forget, get your calendar open February 24th through the 28th. Check it out. All the information is on websites. Thank you both for an amazing show. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time.